Greetings and salutations, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome back. It's League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. And we are whew, into a new chapter, a new era of airport speed running North America. God bless them. The memes of their international demise will forever live on and right near the top we can probably immediately slot this in the conversation fly quest msi 2024 one of if not the most disappointing international performances ever by an na team i'm uh lock it in as a top three disappointing performance by an na team at an international event you can you can make arguments for the top or you know runner up spot you know, I, dishonorable mention in this type of case situation for FlyQuest. They were playing like it was their quest to fly home, was the way that we saw from FlyQuest in this series against PSG. There's a lot to talk about, a lot of a lot of things that we are extremely unhappy about and need to be talking about in this series. But mega disappointment for North American fans that were invested into this, investing the time to be up early again for another international event, and you got let down big time. So many things that are wild across the series. We know they got absolutely pumped, almost record speed by T1. But honestly, you listen to the comps, guys were yucking it up, laughing. Oh man, the game's over at 17 minutes. Ha ha ha, we got so stomped. So I thought, okay, maybe they're not going to be too heartbroken, tilted. T1's the defending champ, still have a solid bounce back. But the confidence definitely seemed to be shattered. There were lingering issues after that T1 series. I don't know. It almost just felt like FlyQuest, they kind of felt entitled. Like going through the motions, like it doesn't matter. We're still going to get through. We PSG, we already beat them once. It felt like they just assumed they were going to win this series. Complete disrespect coming through from these FlyQuest players. And you heard it in the interview later from Jensen talking about it. You know what? We didn't really learn anything, I guess, from our series wow. with PSG. Wow. It, Rather, how did you not learn anything from that series? And and it's one of those ones where it's, okay, maybe you didn't learn anything immediately after. Maybe you didn't learn anything when you played against T1 and you were having a little bit of fun getting pumped up like that. The way, you know, getting that experience from T1, that world champion experience out there. And you say, okay, that was fun. We're still fine. We're still cool. We're still better than PSG. And we're rolling on through to the next stage. That's not the case. PSG comes through at that point. They beat a straw. They've leveled up. They've continued to improve. They're starting to feel more comfortable at the international event, all these type of things. And you get into that series. Again, a best of series, and you lock in, and you get throttled game one. And the response in game two was not one of a team that says, okay, let's look into our hearts. Let's dig deep. We got to bounce back. This is unacceptable for us at the LCS, for a major region to go out like this. You saw a lot of tilt, a lot of quit, and a lot of team members leaving is the way I felt about this one with FlyQuest. There, there seemed like there was no sense of urgency. Like they were in an elimination match at an international event, which is so crazy. This is when teams should be razor focused, locked in. The only thing it felt like these guys were locked in on was chasing kills around the map and ignoring their own mini maps locked in like your average bronze player looking for a kill and i swear i swear that's what you're seeing a game two that that whole uh, fiesta chase around circle circus in the top side getting that double flash flashing without having the stun prepared on the renekton number one it, what's going on there mr whippo and then you keep going and of course aurelian soul shows up maple is there and it's just insane this whole series is so frustrating so unacceptable from a North American perspective. And it's one of these ones where I think there's gonna be a conversation about this FlyQuest roster, of course, on where you're going and how you improve and, and what do you do and all these type of things. It's gonna go two ways. You're either gonna have this group come together and look and go, you know what? That was unacceptable. What the heck is wrong with us? That's not who we are as professional players. That's not the level that is gonna be acceptable. We are gonna to group together and we are gonna be stronger and better and more accountable moving forward or you just fully implode. And that is, is what I think a lot of people are gonna be putting their, their expectations on. Well, yeah, especially, you know, we already had the drama after summer final or spring finals where 
inspired talking about Jensen and both him and Bwipo have talked about at nauseum publicly in interviews the performance of their individual players Jensen in this post interview said felt like team wasn't on the same page and you could definitely see that on the rift throughout these last two series but that really does make me question what is the relationship between these guys are some of them gonna want to play together in the summer split and honestly I've never seen guys like Bwipo and Jensen look so down so low energy than after that PSG series this was a a a real backbreaker for a lot of these guys and I think you know, rightfully so, right? Feeling the pain, feeling the disappointment and anger that is going to come through in this situation. When you're talking about uh, looking at this roster moving forward, Inspired is number one. That's a big one. And this is a guy that we talked about, has the talent that you were going, what is going wrong with the LCS that this player is not having a starting position? This attitude, this type of personality, this type of approach to the game and to your teammates is absolutely one that can find you without a job can find you off a team despite having the type of talent that he's got that's got to be changed FlyQuest is the friendly team the one you want to root for we're all buddies we're all friends that's not the energy we're getting no that's not what we were seeing whatsoever and i think that that was very clear that you were seeing either a, a jungler who was tilted at everybody else or just tilted in the situation And was hyper-focusing then at that point on, okay, well, I'm just going to farm. I'm just going to do my thing. It's the same type of thing any jungler that gets frustrated with their teammates or friends that they're playing with goes, yeah, you know what? Leave me alone for five minutes. I'm just going to go farm. I'm going to figure this out. That's all we saw from him. The Maokai especially, all we saw from him in this one. Just what you want, a farming Maokai off on his own. Uh, Incredibly disappointing. Uh, There's a lot to look at here. I want to make sure there's some positivity coming through still because I want to talk about Masu and Busio down in the bottom line. I think that these two absolutely had their struggles. There's no question about that as well with these two at this event. Obviously, the expectations of what you need from them and how you need to develop and support that development for these two is going to be incredibly different. And where your uh, you know, anger and level of, of disappointment goes for what this run is with them is completely different to the expectations that were there for the veterans, established professionals, the experienced ones, those th- that trio that you've got up in that top side. I think that this bottom lane deserves a little bit of respect, a little bit of acknowledgement of, yes, you've had your struggles. You also did go up against Gumiusi and Kyria. And of course, you're looking down at the bottom lane of PSG and they are certainly no slouches, have had their accomplishments themselves. I, I think Ma- Masu and Busio need to take a little look in the mirror and realize that this obviously was a complete clown show they're not necessarily the ones arranging for the the circus car to show up and i hope i truly hope it doesn't impact the growth of both of these young players because you talk about desire to win and accountability the juxtaposition between some interviews with guys like inspired whippo even jensen and then masu after he looked so crushed he's holding back tears talking about specifically himself saying he's disappointed in himself. He knows he could have done more. He wish he could have provided more for his team. Having that sentiment and mentality as a 19-year-old rookie, what more can you ask for? Uh, these are the guys that you got to make sure that you're developing properly, is, is all you can say. It's because you can know that not only do you check that, of course, we've seen some pretty darn good raw skills from this player, Also having that type of attitude as a professional, someone that wants to improve, wants to be that contributor, that is something you got to foster and keep in a a relatively positive state, especially for the LCS as we're trying to bring up ourselves and bring up this young domestic town. Hopefully this team comes back in summer together stronger than ever, but a bit of a head scratcher for management probably after this run in terms of what they want to do with this squad for the summer split. Luckily, as is tradition... The West is held up by EU. Fnatic. It wasn't pretty, but it was at least a 2-0 against Gam, who kind of surprisingly beat Loud to even get to this point with some subs. But how about three subs and Gam is putting up more of a fight in a bigger underdog story than we saw out of FlyQuest? Oh, this is just so poetic that this is the follow-up to talking about the debacle that was FlyQuest going to the airport way, way too early is the situation of not only one, Fnatic, NEU, making it on out, play-ins, check mark, no problem. And of course, 
the Gigabyte Marines showing you heart, showing you that passion for the game and wonder they took it seriously. That is the biggest thing for me, what you saw in this series, what you got from this one, uh, fresh off of that stinker that was the FlyQuest performance. And I mean, yes, especially that second game, 43 minutes, it was, uh, there were some moments Fnatic getting a little bit too hypey, but still for the most part, Fnatic, a much more well-oiled machine on the same page across the board, this playing stage. They had, you want to talk about bloodthirsty, they had four more kills on average than any other team in the playing stage. Throw in T1 and top esports included. They also had the highest first blood rate by like 30%, so they were thirsty for kills early, mid, and late game, and that was shown especially throughout this BCS head-to-head uh, -head series. And how about Noah versus Jackie Love and versus everyone else at this tournament so far? Oh, man. I, I Look, I'm what I'm excited about is he's going to be going up against Pate. That's the big one for me that you're looking at, and he's talked about it. Uh, you know, he played against Pate down in the LCK Challenger scene, so now it's going to be a fun time getting that matchup. I'm not so sure Mr. Razork is as, uh, as thrilled that he's going to be having Canyon to deal with on the other side of that individual matchup. Fnatic gets through. They, they really showed it. I think one of the big thing here is, of course, is that you saw from T1, top esports, Fnatic, clearly, again, maybe not necessarily to the same ultimate level as top esports and T1, but clearly that cut above. Clearly the team that shows, okay, we're a major region. We shouldn't be at this type of level. Let's move on. We're going to get through these and, and through this play in stage. And again, that fourth team that buddies on up, that is maybe that little bit of a distance behind. Normally, LCS is absolutely not, absolutely not the LCS this time around. It is PSG buddying on up and making on through the playing round. And I mean, truthfully, after that first round, as we say goodbye to Gam, that first matchup against Fnatic, we were going, oh. Boy, they should not even have a spot here. But, hey, man, kudos to them. Much like the last international event, they bounce back, get a series win against Loud, and then at least a competitive second game against Fnatic to kind of get a bit of redemption for the BCS. Hey, maybe if things all implode at FlyQuest, they can pick up a couple of these guys, and at least they've got a bit of heart to show out here and get in a good match. Start learning Vietnamese, Bwipo, and Inspired. <laughs> Oh, man. I don't even think they could get one of these spots nope. at this point. Not after, after this event. Certainly not after that performance. No team has taken that hit uh, on one of these ones. When we move in to the next stages for FlyQuest, for PSG, I think they're getting a nice, you know, uh, quick step up into what is going to be in this next territory when we're moving on. And a fresh reminder for everybody, Best of five central from now on. You better buckle up, get your snacks, get your drink, get a little bit of hydration because we got a long stay at this MSI. And now looking back as the playing stage is now behind us as a whole, mostly gone as expected. Uh, obviously, T1 and TS, TES going through without a hitch really, Fnatic getting through, but the FlyQuest angle is a perfect example of why these playing stages are so important. Even though on paper they look like such big mismatches, you still are almost guaranteed one upset every year at these things. Uh, so I think I think the secret is going to be not to remove the major region status from North America, even if the LCK, LPL, and LEC might like that, not to have that stain attached to their, their wagon at this point. But I think one of the things is going to have to be, let's get a tournament. Let's get some type of uh, show match arranged here between, you know, these smaller regions that are all around. Squads like PSG, Astral, all these type of things. Maybe give them an opportunity to get that berth, to get that extra berth that normally would go over to one of these major regions type of situations. To an LCS as a second, as a third seed, whatever. Put that up for grabs because we have certainly shown not consistently enough strong enough to hold that spot getting three lcs teams when they're bowing out in playing stage does seem absurd compared to these wildcard regions that are only going to be getting one you alluded to it we're heading to the big the opening the main stage of msi and the bracket draws are a little less dramatic than worlds because there's only like one or two possibilities for how things 
can actually play out. But we have the top eight. We have the bracket drawn. Things are going to kick off with Team Liquid versus Top Esports. All of a sudden now, TL are the lone torch bearers left for North America. And immediately they're dropped in to that play-in winning TES squad, which they will be massive underdogs against. What are you talking about? You don't got faith? That we're rolling on through with Ziggs all the way straight to the I mean, bottom. Cream is the best matchup APA can hope for when the other options are Night Faker and Chovy. And flat out, the best that you could hope for if you're an LCS fan, to stack up, to be that option, to be that wall that protects you from 369 in the top side, it is your boy. Grandpa Impact up in the top side, the steady performer at the international events for North America. That is absolutely someone that I'm going to be looking at in this important matchup to give uh, a point where you can get to some of these later team fights. So some of these later points, later actions where you can hope maybe you swing it your way is one of the things I'm looking up for team looking because I don't imagine a lot of early advantages going their way when I'm talking about what is going to be coming through from the top esports side. I am concerned about the bottom lane. I think that's, the bottom lane is that's the one, that's the only matchup that in this series you're sweating, but uh, you're really sweating that matchup. Uh, yeah, the problem is you're sweating it out more than any sauna in the world at this point. You're sitting on the sauna in the sun at that point is how it looks for how much sweat would be going on. Because yes, Jan and Core JJ individually, you know, uh, have much better than they were last year, I think, to take that checkpoint in with them and, and, and the strides that Jan as an individual ADC and, and player growing up, has taken it's gonna be a lot checked up against the world champions of the bottom lane of top esports both jackie love of course the incredible skill and, and tenacity that we know that he has got out there on the position you add in the smarts and calling from mako and how respectable he has been this season that's going to be a bot lane that i am scared for what team liquid is going to face if they were doing what they did to noah and jun I, i'd be scared what they can do to yawn and core jj but if there's a level up there there's still avenues of hope for team liquid even when na stocks are at an all-time low uh fanatic you mentioned the incredible level up going from gam right into gen g for about the steepest power curve that you could possibly have uh, maybe though because we always talk about gen g being a little more passive L lck play style maybe the chaos of fanatic could be to their uh, positive in this matchup possibility and i think as far as how things are, are going right now humanoid has shown that he's at a pretty strong level and he's absolutely at that type of tier and what he's playing of course is the extra thing they love long these type of champions that extra angle into chovy where i think you can shake up the matchup enough that it's not just going to be chovy dictating what's going to be happening where chovy's going to shove you in so you're going to be babysitting your tower and taking care of some minions i'm gonna go take care of and terrorize your teammates type of situation is one of the things that you can hopefully avoid with some of these changes some of these performances from humanoid in that mid lane the question for me even more so than what we've issued already talking about these ones you know no one pays down in that bottom lane razor canyon all these type of things I'm looking in that top side. Askirant versus Keen. That is absolutely going to be a level up and a lesson learning experience for someone like Askirant to, to stable and stand up to. And that's probably the biggest concern because Pace has been slumping as of late. Noah's looked great. I feel okay about the bot lane matchup. Humanoid and Razork are the strength pillars of Fnatic. I know Chovy and Canyon are different beasts, but maybe close to matchup but if keen finds some carry pocket picks you might be sweating that top lane that's that's the main point of concern for fanatic obviously still gonna be huge underdogs there then we get the always expanding rivalry of t1 versus g2 it's been a couple of years since we actually got this matchup internationally and g2 is the higher seed so obviously they're favorites uh, what it, what it is, has to have been something, what is it, the little gap between the Marvel movies after the latest Avengers one? That, that's what we're feeling. The next iteration coming on through in the T1G2 cinematic universe is what we've and got they say, on what, tour. It's the same five from last time at MSI? Oh, my God. Returning cast for this motion picture coming to you later in the weekend. Yes, I'm I'm super excited about this matchup because i think a lot of people are doubting g2 a lot of them are seeing this one and instantly 
writing them off and not even bringing up the history that G2 has been able to punish T1 with over the course of time. I think there's certainly angles for this G2 roster to find uh, a quick jump on T1 that has had this little breather, little step away between games from the play-in stage to now the main stage. And, I mean, T1's probably feeling pretty good. Not that they needed a confidence boost after being so close to capturing that spring title against Gen G, but they look like they're in perfectly fine form, and G2 is going to need to be finding that middle of the spring split level if they want any hope in this series. They still have got more hope than PSG talent. Going from an inting fly quest to BLG, I, it's not Fnatic to Gen.G, it's PSG to BLG that's far away the biggest power curve change. Uh, the, in the incredible thing of international tournaments and, and your reward as a minor region is, is getting your date, getting you your You wanna play smash with the big boys? Here's the big boy is getting most likely your face smashed in by B Giga Bin and the rest of BLG is the way things go for this matchup. I'd love to say that there's an angle here. And you know what there actually is if things go a little bit too sideways for BLG is what I'll call it. Uh, can bring in some of the team fighting angle. And as long as that team fighting angle is there, PSG's got a shot because they certainly can team fight. They certainly have that coordination uh, and decisiveness in their calls to be able to stand toe to toe. The question is, well, are the wallets too big for BLG at that point? Have they been been economy maxing too too well through those early parts to be at that point where you can have those team fights is going to be the question. And I think a lot of the times that answer is going to be a mighty yes from the side of Gigabin and BLG. Maybe I'd give the angle. Maybe BLG's a little jet lag that would come over. But we're in China, so they don't even have that bonus going for them. But all West or wildcard regions against the LCK and LPL, I'm just hoping it's not all three zeros in the first round of these best of fives. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties, thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.